Episode number 257 I don't promise to answer. Your face will, if your tongue won't. You aren't woman of the world enough yet to hide your feelings, my dear. I heard rumors about Fred and you last year, and it's my private opinion that if he had not been called home so suddenly and detained so long, something would have come of it, hey? That's not for me to say, was Amy's grim reply, but her lips would smile, and there was a traitorous sparkle of the eye, which betrayed that she knew her power, and enjoyed the knowledge. You are not engaged, I hope. And Lori looked very elder brotherly and grave all of a sudden. No. But you will be, if he comes back, and goes properly down on his knees, won't you? Very likely. Then you're fond of old Fred? I could be, if I tried. But you don't intend to try till the proper moment. Bless my soul, what unearthly prudence. He's a good fellow, Amy, but not the man I fancied you'd like. He's rich, a gentleman, and has delightful manners. Began Amy, trying to be quite cool and dignified, but feeling a little ashamed of herself in spite of the sincerity of her intentions. I understand. Queens of society can't get on without money, so you mean to make a good match, and start in that way? Quite right, and proper, as the world goes, but it sounds odd from the lips of one of your mother's girls. True, nevertheless. A short speech? But the quiet decision with which it was uttered contrasted curiously with the young speaker. Laurie felt this instinctively, and laid himself down again, with a sense of disappointment, which he could not explain. His look and silence, as well as a certain inward self-disapproval, ruffled Amy, and made her resolve to deliver her lecture without delay. I wish you'd do me the favor to rouse yourself a little, she said sharply. Do it for me, there's a dear girl. I could, if I tried. And she looked as if she would like doing it in the most summery style. Try, then. I give you leave, returned Laurie, who enjoyed having someone to tease after his long abstinence from his favorite pastime. You'd be angry in five minutes. I'm never angry with you. It takes two flints to make a fire. You are as cool and soft as snow. You don't know what I can do. Snow produces a glow and a tingle, if applied rightly. Your indifference is half a fictation, and a good stirring up would prove it. Stir away, it won't hurt me, and it may amuse you, as the big man said when his little wife beat him. Regard me in the light of a husband, or a carpet, and beat till you're tired, if that sort of exercise agrees with you.